Hi, and welcome to a slightly different Lewis Art video this week. Back at the start of the year, I was still making my spray paint videos and paintings. Bit by bit, each canvas sort of required a little bit of touching up and brushwork, and that started to get me thinking about perhaps I needed to improve my painting skills a little bit more. At the same time, I was creating videos about going out and exploring the North Devon coastline, looking at some fantastic scenery. And slowly, an idea started to form in my mind. So I rushed on home and decided to order myself a plein air easel and get out there and create some art out in the environment. Easy, I thought. No problems. Piece of cake. Oh, man. Of course, it wasn't always oh, straightforward. Man. All over my shoe. Oh, no. We've got a leak. Nightmare. Oh, nightmare. So I have to admit to being somewhat humbled by plain air painting with oils. It's been challenging. It's been hard. And uh, it's also been a lot of fun. I've certainly got to uh, get out there and explore a little bit more. And um, it's given me an opportunity to meet some great YouTubers online. So there's been lots of benefits to it. But uh, this video is basically just my beginner's tips that I've picked up along the way. So uh, here it is. My top tips for beginners, plain air painting with oils. Let's go. Now it's certainly true to say you don't need to have an easel to get out there painting. But uh, if that is what you wish to do, then you've got a good choice of pochard and plain air boxes to purchase. Alternatively, you could even try making your own. Certainly one factor worth thinking about is how far you're traveling with your box and uh, whether or not it's too heavy for you. A heavy box can certainly be painful. Now, if you have the know-how or you know somebody who does, then you could put together your own tripod easel. There's plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to do this it. This is amazing. <laughs> The tripod easel certainly is a lot lighter and means that you could potentially travel further afield. The more traditional easels have their storage capacity within them, meaning that everything is set up in one place. At the end of the day, it really is up to you and uh, I would strongly recommend taking your time and thinking carefully about how far you're going to be traveling and what you really need. It's certainly a beautiful day and I've come to somewhere that I discovered at the weekend on a family walk and I thought right I'm coming back because this place is great because just over this hedge and a little bit further along looking that way as well which we'll see in a bit beautiful views beautiful views so um want to have a look let's have a look so um yeah so here we are Beautiful, absolutely beautiful out there. Um, sorry, the camera's all wobbly and whatnot, but uh, you know, high tech stuff. This now you really don't have to go very far at all, but I do love getting out and seeing different places. And there's even some hills over in the far left here that are sort of further afield. We're in the distance there, I'm poking it. That's Clo Valley. Once you found something you'd like to paint, and so that's Westwood Ho over there in the distance. You can either sketch it into a sketchbook first or go directly onto your canvas. The beauty about plein air painting is if you're not feeling confident you can find a secluded spot and not be interrupted very much at all or you can put yourself in a busy area and have plenty of fantastic conversations with people. The choice is really yours. It's certainly true to say that eventually everywhere you go seems to be a potential painting. So there we are, as usual, set up in the back here, the bin through the middle, uh, a bit of paint there in the pot there, um, some turfs to clean my brushes, uh, that one already needs a clean, um, my tub for my brushes and my palette knives, and um, some spare cloths, got some tissues, 
rubber gloves, liquid. Uh, let's have a look at today's palette. Now, you really don't need to spend a great deal on oils in the first place. You basically need a reasonable mid-brand and I suggest going on to any decent art site online and having a look. There are links in the description below for two of the art sites that I use and you want to find yourself a reasonable mid-range paint to start with. An early mistake that I made was mixing up the colours too much on the canvas, making them a little bit muddy. Try and mix all the oils on your palette to keep them clean and vibrant. So the paints that I'm using today in no particular order. So here's my palette today and my colours. Um, so the colours I've put down. Your choice of palette is completely up to you of course and depends on what it is that you're going to be painting. But there is something to be said for embracing the idea of a limited palette to begin with. So my paints today are titanium white, ultramarine blue, um, cadmium lemon, burnt sienna, and for the red, I've got permanent alizarin crimson. Once you've got the hang of a limited palette, then you could perhaps add more color. Right, so let's go for it with these new paints. So basically I've got raw umber, azo yellow green, phthalo blue, cadmium red deep hue, cadmium yellow deep hue, ultramarine blue and white. A good piece of advice I was given early on was to buy a larger titanium white and ultramarine blue because you tend to use them more than other colors. Um, just for a minute, I don't have, didn't know what to carry my canvases in. So I've created um, a box here with um, enough to put four wet canvases in, protected two back to back in the middle, two on either end. Um, and then I can sort of carry them back home. I started on quite small 10 by eight canvas boards and straight away I struggled to work out how I was supposed to carry them and uh, just created a little storage container out of the box that the canvases were actually delivered in. Um, and it worked quite well for me. A smaller canvas also means that you're not using up too much of your oils early on. Although be careful not to fall into the trap that I did, which was trying to put in too much detail into a smaller canvas. Of course, there are plenty of other methods to start you off, but I found that this was the most helpful for me. And uh, the canvas I'm using today is an eight by 10 canvas panel, 100% cotton, eight ounce primed, bloody blah, 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 blah. So still for the time being, I'm using an Arteza eight by 10 canvas panel, 100% cotton, eight ounce primed, blah, 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 blah. So this is an Arteza 8x10 inch canvas panel, 100% cotton, 8 ounce primed, blah -de blah 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 -de blah blah. So the canvas panel that I'm using is an Arteza 8 inch by 10 canvas panel, 100% um, cotton, 8 ounce primed, blah blah blah, very nice. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the canvas that I'm using. So I've got two canvases today. The first one, uh, the 8x10 canvas panel by Arteza, 100% cotton, 8 ounce primed, bloody blah 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 blah. But I also have now um, the Crawford and Black basic cheap canvas board, 100% um, pure cotton, double gesso primed. Good. So. Um, double vaccinated that's useful uh, suitable for oil and uh, acrylic paints yeah 10 by 12 inch approximately approximately so um, I'm thinking what I might do today is sketch out quickly on a smaller board and then switch over um, to the larger board and give that a try I mean it's not massively different is it but you know might be worth a try so for some people this is basically common sense but for me it wasn't and I actually learned the hard way. I started off with my hair fairly long, which was doing the back of my neck a favor out in the sunshine. But uh, after a somewhat extreme haircut, I decided to go and stand in the middle of a field for a couple of hours and surprise, surprise, I got sunburned. So after that, I knew it was time to get myself a slightly better hat that gave me a little bit more shade, both front and back. When busy planning where you're going to go and what you're going to take uh, in terms of painting materials, it's very easy to forget to make sure that you are well protected from the elements. So suntan lotion and water for dehydration are very useful, as is a damn good hat. 
Wow, flies. I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy this if I've got this many flies hanging around me. Um, to be fair, that's, that, that is quite normal. But there are literally thousands of them around here. So, for those of you that have seen my videos in the past, you'll know that I like a flask of good coffee. Um, although, it is in fact more than just drinking the coffee. For me, it's a chance to stop and reflect and to think about all the things that I'm grateful for and take a minute just to enjoy the moment and the beautiful views all around me. Cheers. 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 Try and keep my mouth small so that the flies don't go in. Cheers. 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 Really hot. So there you go, there are my top tips for beginners. As you can see, there's not a great deal of technical information in there because, well, I'm still learning to paint myself. But hopefully, some of these uh, tips and pointers might inspire you to get out there and get painting. I've really enjoyed plein air painting and I certainly get a lot from it. And if you're thinking about having a go at plein air painting, I strongly recommend you get out there. Don't let anything hold you back. It's well worth trying and it's a really satisfying and enjoyable pastime. Don't worry about the quality of your paintings. Just get out there and have a go. Just enjoy the process and the freedom. It really is worth doing. And don't forget, there's a fantastic plein air community on YouTube for you to have a look at and explore. I found everyone to be really friendly and helpful. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask and post them on YouTube. You often get very quick responses and some fantastic and helpful tips. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below. And uh, I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this or any of my other videos, there are a number of ways you can support me in the future. Like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And now you can even donate on my Buy Me A Coffee page. As you can see from my new videos, I love coffee. But your donation will do more than just keep me full of caffeine. Every donation will go straight into buying new art materials for future projects. So your help will be truly appreciated. It's easy to use. Simply follow the link and you can donate as little as £2 to help out. Feel free to leave a comment and there's even a link to my website. Your support really does go a long way to helping me to create more art in the future. Thanks.